All right, guys. So uh, I guess in this particular step, um, we are going to go ahead and we're going to remove the original gauge, which I have already pulled out, uh, and we are going to interchange it with uh, the uh, digital GPS speedometer I was explaining to you. I will leave links in the description, but this is it here, pretty straightforward. What we are gonna do is we're gonna use the existing wire harness, which runs down to this plug here and splice it into our wiring. The uh, original plug is easy to pop out. All you do is uh, basically use a screwdriver or some sort of prying device to get behind it pop it out then you're gonna be left with this uh, piece of rubber right here which you can basically yank out you'll want to get rid of and then give me a moment I'm gonna wire everything in I'm gonna show you exactly what I did to make this work All right, now after that's all done, I went ahead and plugged the unit in. Uh, so you, now you can see we have a finished adapter. Uh, and for this particular model, because it's a fairly tight fit, I'm not going to use the rear uh, clamp or uh, whatever you want to call this uh, thing that, that goes on there, the bracket. It's a tight fit. It's not going to come out, and that's the way the factory was too. So I'm going to go ahead and push this in, get it nice and tight in there. Slide it all the way back in. Take some pressure. Looks pretty good to me. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to test it. What I have here is a small 12-volt battery. I'm going to go ahead and apply power to the plug underneath to make sure that it's getting to the actual unit itself. All right, and there we go. We got it hooked up to our small 12-volt battery just to make sure it works. Uh, not having a cameraman, I had to use something to prop the thing up because it doesn't hold itself up. But this is actually a four-pin system, and it only needs actually two to power the unit. One for ground, one for positive. Uh, I chose to do pink for positive, blue for ground. And I actually hooked both, or both sets of wires up because now I have the option to backfeed wiring from this gauge to another gauge, which may be added in the future. Uh, but if you look here... There is our GPS speedometer. Uh, the solid light sh indicates that it's actually working, and as you see, it says 0.0, .0 miles per hour because it's obviously not moving. All right, guys, the next step is to go ahead and remove the choke cable, and in its place, we're gonna install a battery level meter that's gonna allow us to see, basically, when we're riding with ski, exactly how much battery is being used and what we have left. So the first thing to do is reach around the back, Spin off the nut, off the back of it, and it only takes a couple seconds. Go ahead and grab the unit. Just go ahead and pull it out. It's always got to be stuck on something. Of course, this one has a little black square on it. I don't know what it's for. So it looks like we're going to have to slide that off here. A few nuts. And once that's done, we'll have it pulled out. All right, next step. Uh, now we're going to do exactly what we spoke about earlier. We are going to install this uh, battery meter gauge inside of where the choke was. Now you'll see I have to kind of grind out where I have marked here on the battery gauge. I also used a file and filed it down uh, a little bit at the bottom so it would help fit in this spot better. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that now and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. All right, now it's in. I went ahead and attached two wires to the back of it. They were hanging uh, and tucked underneath, so when I need to hook it up to the 48 volt battery, I can. I also went ahead and put some silicone behind the unit so any kind of moisture wouldn't get through and get to the wiring. All right, and for the last gauge, we are going to install a actual voltage meter to go alongside of our battery indicator meter. Uh, this will tell actual volts, so uh, when the battery gets down below, let's say, 41, 42-ish volts, um, you could start doing damage to the batteries by wearing them down too far. And even though there is a bypass that will be on the actual ECM that controls the battery 
Uh, this will also give you a uh, manual control to know that if you get down to 42 volts, you better get it back and get it charged so you don't do damage to the actual batteries. But what we're going to do is we are going to install uh, basically the, the gauge in the hole I just drilled you see right here. Um, and we'll have it hooked up and ready to go. And there you go, all installed. In this part, we will be removing the hand grips and the old thumb throttle and installing a twist throttle, an electronic one. We're going to start by removing the old throttle, thumb throttle, uh, popping the two pins out and pulling out the cable. And then we'll proceed to pop these out and take two 10 millimeter bolts, one out of each side until they slide off. All right, you can see those are off and now we are going to continue to removing the lower panel. Uh, so we can get the cable out and slide the new wiring in for the uh, throttle. And now you see the pad is off. So now we must fish this line down through here, out the bottom, and then get our other lines through it. Next I'm actually going to cut this piece down right about here so the new lever fits flush and doesn't overhang. Alright, grips are on, wires run. A little tip, before you pull that throttle cable out, go ahead and tape your new wires to it. You'll have to pull them out of the harness. Tape it around, up here obviously, and simply pull it down through so your wires are already through. And the uh, final look with the pad back on. All right, today we're gonna to be uh, working on the batteries and getting them mounted in and caged in uh, and wired up. So as you can see here, here are the four different 12 volt batteries we just got in. Uh, these are a 35 series battery, basically the same thing you would use for a solar power system. Um, again, we're running it in series to make it a 48 volt system. And what we're gonna be doing is taking two metal brackets on the side here and here and we will be making a brace down the side here so we can have them all held together and situated when they're inside the ski. I'm going to start welding that and I'll get back in a minute. Alright, there it is. There is the bracket finished. My welding sucks, but hey, what you get for using a Harbor Freight welder? That's uh, flux core. Anyhow, uh, to give you an idea, this is the way it's, it's going to set up. Positive comes in here, runs through basically like this negative comes here. So we're going to get these things set in the uh, hull right now, see if we can lock them down with some straps and uh, make them more permanent. Oh yeah, there it is guys. She's installed. What you'll see here is it's got two straps holding it in. Extremely tight. Hurt my hands trying to get them on. They're so tight. Uh, and then obviously the bracket that I had made all the way around it. I also went ahead and put in two plastic plates between the areas we do not want to touch. And the reason I did that is because, like I just said, you don't want them to touch, boy, it zaps. I uh, learned the hard way there. So, um, anyways, uh, all I did to make those, I took uh, basically a vinyl wrap squeegee, cut it in half, and used some 3M uh, double-sided tape to stick them right to the battery so I knew it would stay, uh, and they're in there pretty good. Um, but this thing, it doesn't move. I can rock the whole boat. It doesn't come off. Uh, so it should hold unless I'm doing some crazy jumps. Uh, but that's the battery pack installed. What you'll see is that the main supplies from the motor, the wiring will go to its negative point here, and its positive point down here, and that will give us 48 volts. Uh, but that'll be in the next episode. Thanks for watching.